my dad's trusty Mark 1 Focus Estate. Shall we talk about this damage? You can if you like. Oh! A lot of coolant coming out. Mad noise, isn't it? Full collection of the Marcus Hayes mugs. My friend Murray is round here. Do you want to man the uh, cross-threaded? Everything seems to be taking way longer than expected. Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes, this is my beautiful girlfriend Kat, and today we're flying up the M1 to visit my parents in Northampton. Tomorrow I'm going around the garage to hopefully fit the ST170 engine into Esther, my Mark 1 Escort. I don't think there's anything else that can stop me putting the engine in. I've got the countersunk bolts. I've already checked that they're the correct thread this time, so we're good to go. Today, I've got a little bit of a job to do on my dad's trusty Mark 1 Focus Estate, so I thought I'd take the camera with me and show you that. It shouldn't take us too long to reach my parents' place, so I'll catch up with you when we get there. All right, so we've made it to my parents, where we joined my dad, Steve, AKA Picasso the painter. All right, so we're gonna be having a little look at my dad's trusty Mark 1 Focus Estate, which has now covered 215,000 miles. Should we talk about this damage down the driver's side, Dad? You can if you like. Dad had a bit of an argument with a little wall and lost. <laughs> but yeah, my dad's been complaining that there's been a bit of a puddle underneath the car when he parks it up. And luckily it turned out to be just coolant. Last time I was here, when we run the engine, I could see that there was coolant coming out from the thermostat housing somewhere. It's probably the seal that goes between the thermostat housing and the cylinder head. Although there is a seal in between this part of the thermostat housing and this part, which is where the thermostat itself goes. Now I did have a spare thermostat housing in my garage and I've actually already put it together with a brand new thermostat and a brand new seal. And this here is the brand new seal that goes between the stat housing and the cylinder head. And I will say that I had to actually buy two of these seals. I bought one on eBay, which wasn't a genuine Ford one and it was basically too big to actually fit into that slot properly. So yeah, if you do need one of these seals for your ZTEC, I highly recommend you get a genuine Ford one, but they are available on eBay for the same price as the pattern ones anyway. So the plan was literally just to swap the whole thermostat housing, but I've actually changed my mind because a lot of these hoses have got these really rubbish Jubilee clips that you need the pliers to undo them. And there's one that's right at the back there. I think it's gonna be quite difficult to disconnect everything to change the whole thermostat housing. I'll probably have to move the core pack out of the way and stuff. So what I'm gonna do instead is just remove the thermostat housing from the cylinder head and change the O-ring. And then I'll be able to just undo these three screws on this bit to pull this bit of the stat housing out of the way to change the stat and the seal. Now there is a small chance that the thermostat housing itself is cracked in which case I'll have to revert back to plan A. But yeah, if, if the thermostat housing isn't cracked, this is definitely gonna be a lot easier. I think I'll just unplug the core pack to get the plug out of the way. If it wants to come off, that's it. Yeah, so I've literally just got these three 10 mil bolts to undo, and then we should be able to pull it away from the cylinder head enough to change the seal. Do the bottom one first, that's the most annoying one. Actually, let's use a socket. One. Oh. Ooh. Right, so, O-ring definitely looks squashed in there, so it probably was this one. It's failed. Can't get it out though. Need something like a thin screwdriver or something. That's either some sealer that someone's put on in the past or part of that o-ring so it looks like that is where the leak was coming from but yeah i can't get this o-ring out oh. could do with like a pin so i could like stab it and pull it out pass us the smallest one of them allen keys let's see if i can use this allen key to get this out there you go try and clean this groove out as best i can Can you go and get me some kitchen towel, Dad? Yeah. I'll just try and clean the cylinder head a bit as well, where the stat housing meets it. Yeah, so the cylinder head's relatively clean now. Poke this in the groove where the seal goes. I think that'll be all right. Put 
the new seal in. And then bolt him up. Oh, no. no, it didn't fall out. Didn't hit the deck, did it? No. Hang on, let's just get one of these in. We'll worry about the lost bolt. Fishing for that bolt now. Didn't go too far. Oh, I can see it. Can you? I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit lucky, wasn't it? Let's get the bottom one in. My hands are too big. <laughs> there we go. Got it in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's in yet. <laughs> Don't have a torque wrench here, and I know this isn't supposed to be that tight. Well, be careful. Keep going until it snaps. All right, so now we're gonna put the new thermostat into this old thermostat housing. I need to take it back out of here first. Oh, that's a water. A lot of coolant from that mad noise, isn't it? <laughs> right. well, luckily the stat is wiggled free quite easily. Yeah, the seal on this is mullered as well. So. Alright, now that was fiddly but the job's done. So we'll run the engine now and hopefully we won't have a coolant leak. But I'm pretty sure it was one of those two seals because they both looked mullered. And look at that, that's the thermostat one. <laughs> it did lose quite a bit. Yeah, it's filling up. Fire her up. Is she in neutral? Oh, hang on. Got a plug in the coil pack. <laughs> All right, go on. Definitely sounds like there's a blow from the exhaust manifold or something, but we won't worry about that at the moment. We'll just let it run for a bit and hopefully it won't leak. I will show you a couple of other changes I've made on the Focus. We switched out the white MH decals for these red ones on the front windscreen. Now that they're available in nine different colours. And today I added the Mark III Escort sticker and the new Esther sticker to this side. Around the other side, I've put the Mark III one here, and next time I come, I'm gonna bring another Maud sticker for here. So my dad's focus is displaying the OG Esther sticker on this side, and the new one on that side. All right, so car's been running for a few minutes, and it's warmed up quite a bit, and I can't see any water dripping down like it was last time I was here. The area is still wet from the old leak, and where I tried to clean the thermostat housing with WD but yeah, it's definitely not dripping like it was before. Sorted I think dad. Sorted. That's it. Here we go. Sweet. Alright so dad's trusty Mark 1 Focus Estate lives on. Now it's time for us all to have some dinner which I'm really looking forward to. And just check the full collection of Marcus Hayes mugs up in my parents kitchen and if any of you guys want to grab any of my mugs or any of my other merchandise you can do on my website at www.marcushayesuk.com as i mentioned earlier i'm going to be going around the garage tomorrow to hopefully fit the st170 engine to esther my mark one escort so i'm going to continue this video then so i'll see you in a sec Hello, right, so it's the next day and I'm around the garage with Esther, my Mark 1 Escort. I've already got her front end jacked up and I've already lowered the cross member and the anti-roll bar. And I've also got an axle stand under the gearbox, which meant I could remove the rope that I had holding the gearbox up. The RX-8 gearbox adapter plate is now bolted onto Esther's new ST170 engine properly. Now that I actually ordered the correct countersunk bolts. So yeah, the engine is now ready. My friend Murray is round here using the Hydro Shot Jet Wash on his very posh Sayak car that he's got. Yeah, he took his car for a service at the Steelership recently and they said they can't wash it for him because of COVID. But yeah, let's get this ST170 dropped into Esther's Bay. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah, 
mate. Do you want to man the uh, hoist? Very responsible job. Down the touch. If you want to put some weight on this for me. Weight on. Just like pushing here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not heavy or anything. And then I'll just need to get a couple of bolts in. Yeah, that's good enough. You can let go. Sure, yeah? Yeah. All right, so the engine is in, sort of. I've got the two bolts that have the alignment dowels done up, so the engine is attached to the bell housing properly. One thing I just realised that I forgot to fit while we were putting the engine in is this coolant hose going to the water rail at the back of the engine, but the engine is actually sitting lower than it will be when it's all bolted up properly. I haven't got the cross member and that bolted up properly yet, so yeah, when I lift the engine up to do that, I can pop that on. And then it's just a case of putting all the other bell housing bolts in and putting everything back together. Definitely a lot easier putting the engine in with an assistant. <laughs> focus on getting this coolant hose on now. Yes. All right, so that coolant hose is attached now. So everything else should be pretty straightforward. I think I've got one bell housing bolt down there that is a bit annoying to get to. So I'll probably do that one first and then I'll start thinking about getting the cross member and that bolted back on and actually have the engine sitting on its mounts rather than being held up by the hoist. And it has to be exactly the right length because it comes through the adapter plate and then it's basically hitting the cylinder head. Um, seems a bit short with both of these washers on so just try with one. All right, so. The thread in the adapter plate up there for that bolt is cross threaded. I don't think it matters too much to be honest because it's right next to this other bolt here with the alignment dowel. And yeah, as I say, because you know you've got the thickness of the plate with the thread in, and then the other side of that is the cylinder head. So the bolt has to be exactly the right length, otherwise, it's not going to grip the plate if it's too short or if it's too long. Obviously, you'll go through and it hits the head and then cross threads, which is exactly what's happened. Yeah, I don't think that's a big deal. Yeah, I'm gonna get all this uh, cross member and that bolted up properly now. So the engine is now bolted in as it should be. I've just put the valve cover on top rather than having that plastic sheeting on it. And yeah, you can just see what I mean by having a silver block, how easy it is to see oil leaks. You can see all that oil on the block there really easily, which is obviously run down there from the sheet that was on top of the engine. Yeah, I haven't got my new inlet manifold gasket yet, annoyingly, but I'm just looking at the material this one because it's quite a thick foam. Might actually be able to just clean the oil off of that and reuse that. I'll have to see. Martin's finished the valet on his car, definitely looking a lot better than it was. What do you reckon of the hydro shot? Very good. It's all right, isn't it? It's really smart, this thing. Proper family wagon. But yeah, I think I'm gonna crack on with bolting all the boring stuff back onto Esther's engine off of camera, and I'll catch up with you a bit later and show you what I've done. Later on. All right, so I've actually been putting things back together now for a few hours. Everything seems to be taking way longer than expected, which is usually the case. But yeah, I've got the manifolds on now. They're not torqued up or anything. That inlet manifold gasket did actually clean up really well, so I think that's gonna be okay. I've got the anti-roll bar hooked back up. I haven't forgotten to do that like I did last time. So yeah, the main things left to do now is obviously fit the radiator and plumb that up. I've got to put the water rail back on once I've actually torqued the exhaust manifold up. And yeah, just basically sort out all the wiring and stuff. Need to plug in the throttle position sensor. Still need to put the coil pack under there and run the leads to the spark plugs. I've actually got a brand new set of spark plugs to go in. Still a lot to do, but I'm really glad that I've got the engine in. And at least now I've got the manifolds on. You can actually start to see how it's gonna look. Definitely looks a lot better with the silver engine block. And as I've mentioned before, it's going to mean that in future, any oil leaks and stuff are going to be a lot easier to spot. Now, I'm actually going to be coming back around here in a couple of days, but there's a couple of other things that I want to focus my attention on then. But within the next week or so, 
I should have everything back together on Esther and hopefully have her running again. Whatever I do get up to in a couple of days, you'll be able to see in the next video. But if you thought this video was any good, please do give it a thumbs up and a share. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Click subscribe to keep up to date with all my future uploads and check the links in the description to my social media and my website. I'll also leave my email address down there for anyone who wants to contact me. But other than that, until next time, thanks for watching.